Hey guys, it's me, Sylvia, back with another video. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we're gonna be doing an in-depth review of Miss Lena Gomez's new beauty line, Rare Beauty. And she's come out with a good amount of products for her first launch. There's all the basics, I feel like, for a full face of makeup. And I've got sent the whole thing in PR. She's given us primer, foundation, concealer, um, a couple beauty tools to apply. So we have a lot of goodies to play with today. I know for a lot of us, it feels like there's a new beauty brand launching every week. It feels like every celebrity is just coming out with them left, right, center it's actually insane like the beauty industry has grown so much in the past few years but I'm still super excited to try this brand out not only because the packaging is a1 like it looks so cute but because I really resonate with the messaging behind the brand I think it's very important it's all about breaking societal standards of perfection and really supporting just self-acceptance and mental well-being and just feeling good in makeup and we know Selena's like been through it I feel like girl has gone through enough who knows what like the stresses that she must be under as a celebrity like she's probably spent so much time just working on her mental health and embracing who she is, which is probably so hard when you have so many people judging you. So it feels really true to her and relatable and true to so many people. So it doesn't just feel like something she, you know, woke up one day and was like, I'm gonna have a makeup line. So I really appreciate that. It makes me even more excited to support and try the brand out. They also developed something called the Rare Impact Fund and no one's really talking about this, but it's all in this pamphlet that they gave me. So I took some time to read it and I think it's just amazing and so important. So what it is, it's like a charity initiative that they're gonna, donate 1% of all annual sales to. Goal is to raise like $100 million over the next 10 years to increase access to mental health services, which is huge. Like 1% doesn't seem like a lot, but come on, in annual sales, like that number must be high. So, we love that, buying some makeup, but also giving back a little like, okay, Selena, you're doing some good. We love to see it. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't watch another second without hitting that little red button. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the PR box that I got with everything in it. The packaging is super cute. It all looks very, very sleek. A lot of people have resembled it to Fenty Beauty. It's plastic, but it looks glass, so it looks expensive. But if you drop it, it looks like it'll be pretty durable, which I like. Right now, it's only available on Sephora or the Rare Beauty website. It is all launched already, so that's where you can find it. I think the most expensive product right now is the foundation, which is $29, so that's pretty good. I feel like the price point is pretty fair. Um, everything does look pretty good quality now that we have a brief, <laughs> brief background on all the info about the brand and pricing, boring stuff's over, let's carry on. First, we're trying out the Always an Optimist Illuminating Primer. Love the name, so cute. It's supposed to be for all skin types. Straight out the pump and swatching it right away, you can see that it has quite a bit of a shimmer to it and it says that those are ultra fine pearls that are supposed to give you instant radiance. Now, your girl's got a little bit of natural radiance herself because I am oily combination skin type. You can see she's got shine everywhere already. But I do like to be super hydrated before I go in with foundation. I'm kind of over really silicone-y primers. You know, the ones that are really thick and like pore filling. I feel like those clog my pores. So this one says it's gel based. You can definitely feel that when you apply. It's very cooling when you apply. It feels really nice actually. Kind of like a little spa moment. Smells really good. Ooh, it's a botanical blend of lotus, gardenia, and white water lily, which is why it feels so soothing and it's supposed to calm stressed out skin, which I need because we have breakouts. My skin definitely feels hydrated and more smooth, but it doesn't feel greasy. It just melts into your skin, very easy to blend. Kind of feels like a gel moisturizer almost. I love how lightweight it feels too. Because of the hydrating formula, I'm assuming it's better for dry skin, but I do have a lot of breakouts with like flaky patches, TMI, I know. So I like how it's kind of hydrated hydrated those areas and I'm hoping that it'll help with the foundation not clinging to them as much. Next, she came out with the Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. Retails for $29. They describe it as a foundation elixir, which is interesting to me. I definitely would recommend shaking it. When I was swatching it, it felt like a very lightweight, almost like water foundation. It's supposed to give you medium to full coverage depending on how much you build it. It has this little doe foot applicator. It's not a pump. Some people are a little picky with that. They think it harbors bacteria. If you're putting it directly on your skin, but you know, your girl just did her skincare routine, face is clean. I don't really care that much. To blend that out, I'm gonna use the foundation brush they came out with. The bristles feel super soft, although the handle will probably get dirty because it's a light colored handle, you know, if you care. Feels like the perfect density, but we'll see how it blends out the foundation. Oh wow, this is blending really, really easily. It says it's supposed to be a natural finish, but we'll wait for it to dry down a bit because right now that definitely looks dewy AF. It definitely doesn't dry down like super fast. You have a lot of play time. They came out with 48 shades, which is amazing. For a first launch, that shade range, you should be able to find your perfect match. I love how it's inclusive. I feel like I definitely didn't have to apply this much. <laughs> 
but you know, we're learning, it's fine. Like it spreads out very easily, so I didn't need as much as I thought I did. Definitely have to rebuy another shade that matches me a little bit better because I don't think any of the ones they sent will do me any good. This is so yellow. I kind of look like a Simpson. We'll focus on the actual formula. So this is only one layer and we definitely have a full coverage. My blemishes are completely covered. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes to dry down, but right now paired with that foundation and my oily skin type, it is a super, super dewy finish, but I also haven't set it yet with a setting powder. So. so we'll wait to see how the foundation wears. It says it's long wearing, but it doesn't say for how long. Usually with foundations like this that are more lightweight and natural serum-like, they tend to be broken down by my oils fairly quickly or trans transfer off if I'm eating or I kind of like scratch my face or wipe my nose. So we will have to wait and see. I'll let you guys know at the end of the video. But right now it almost seems like that type of foundation that will like trick people into thinking you have perfect skin because it looks so skin-like and it is so lightweight. It's like unclockable, but it still covers up any acne like no problem. So right now I'm liking it, but we'll see. If it doesn't last more than two seconds then. Next we have the Liquid Touch Brightening Concealer to test out. It does come in 48 different shades as well. The applicator for this is very interesting. It kind of has a flattened edge to it. It's almost like triangular. And I like how thick it is and quite big. And I'm gonna use the concealer brush to blend one side out. Speaking of which, let's talk about the foundation brush because I forgot to mention anything. It was just so easy to apply that I almost forgot I was using like a new brush. I actually really, really like the way it applied. This is like the perfect density for a foundation brush for me. I also like how it is angled. So I think it would work really well to like blend out cream contour as well. I don't see any streakiness. So I really like the brush. I usually don't really really like to blend out my concealer with a brush, it just takes so long. But I would see myself using this to cover up acne with concealer as like a spot treatment blending tool. That concealer blended seamlessly into the foundation. Like it doesn't feel like it's sitting on top of your skin. It feels like it melts in your skin, which I really like. Not bad, not bad. Pretty good coverage, I would say, for such a lightweight formula. Big fan of the brushes so far. They're super good quality and it shows. Let's blend the other side out with the sponge. I think it's a really interesting shape. The top is kind of like a prism and the bottom is more rounded out. So you got options depending on what area of your face you're blending. I'm gonna go wet it with some water. You can see it almost doubled in size. Ooh, it feels kind of enormous for my under eye, my tiny little eyes over here. What is going on? What is that? No, I don't like that. It's weird. It's like it's leaving imprints and kind of lifting the foundation or not really blending well into the foundation. You see what it's doing there? Now I really wish I didn't forget to use it for my foundation because then we could really get a feel for it in a bigger area of her face, but for concealer, I'm not really digging it. Like it's blending now, but it's definitely taking a little bit more finessing. So far, I'm not really a big fan of the sponge. Not terrible because I was able to kind of work with it in the end. It just took a little more finessing, but not my favorite. Concealer looks really great right off the bat. It's definitely that hydrating lightweight formula, just like the foundation. Blends really nicely. It looks very natural, but it's still seems to have covered up my discoloration and most of my darkness. She also came out with a Blot & Glow touch-up kit, refillable compact containing oil absorbing papers and radiant powder infused puff for easy touch-ups on the go. A powder infused puff? Cool. I don't really see any powder on there. It's, are they lying to me? Oh, powder is coming out, do you see? Cool. First I thought $26 was a lot for this, but you do get a whole compact with a mirror in it. And then the products inside are refillable. So you don't have to buy the whole thing over again. You can just buy the refill. Oh honey. Not only did it take away the oils, but you can see it definitely lifted the foundation. So I definitely need to set the foundation before I touch my face or do anything else. Ooh, definitely working. Mattifying and kind of setting my forehead without lifting or taking away any of the foundation. Patting it on my hand, you can see there's quite a bit of shimmer. The Rare Beauty is really all about that glow, honey. I like this. I like that it's not a regular puff. It's a cool puff. It's got some secret powder in there and it definitely does help with soaking up oils, but still leaving you with a nice natural finish and not making you look cakey. The blotting papers, I feel like they're just regular. Nice that she's come out with that, especially since the foundation is quite shiny. This would probably be necessary, especially if you're oily skin type, to touch up throughout oh, the day. Next we're trying out the Brow Harmony Pencil in Gel, $22, which I'm surprised by considering it's like a two in one. You get a gel and a pencil. It's available in eight other shades, which is actually quite a lot for brows. Let's try and create 
create some fake brow hairs at the front here by doing some little strokes using the edge of the pen. It's very, very creamy, so it is going on super pigmented. Adjust your pressure of your hand accordingly. I do prefer usually for my brows a more precise, very micro tip brow pencil because it does allow me to be more precise with where I'm creating those fake hairs. But you'll love this if you have really sparse brow hairs and you just like something very creamy to fill in really quickly. For the gel part, I'm actually not gonna use that on my brows because it is tinted and I feel like my brow hairs are quite thick and strong on their own. So if I fill them in with a tinted gel, it's gonna make them look pretty blocky. So I would almost prefer if they had a spoolie brush on the end of it personally, especially with the super pigmented, really creamy pencil, you almost really need something to blend out that product. Next, we're trying the Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Liner. It claims to be long wearing and waterproof that won't smudge, streak, or feather. It says it has a revolutionary ink cartridge, so it's meant to like constantly have product flowing through there. I guess that means it's not gonna like dry out on you, which is huge. And the brush is interesting. It says has over a thousand vegan brush hairs. Oh yeah, the product's just flowing out of there. It's actually really precise. On first impression, I really like the eyeliner pen. The flexible brush tip made it really easily to follow along the grooves of my eyeball, you know? It went on super smooth, very jet black, very pigmented. I love how it's a matte finish. The true test now would be to see how long it wears if it in fact doesn't smudge or flake. I also applied it on my inner corner. My tear ducts are super watery and honestly, any eyeliner I use in my inner corner like always smudges even if it's waterproof so this is gonna be a real blush test. she also came out with liquid blushes there's eight different shades four matte formulas and four dewy formulas I got sent two shades of each formula I'm gonna use the shade joy which is one of the dewy formulas it's a really pretty vibrant coral shade now because I don't want to get too carried away with it I'm gonna just put some of that on the back of my hand. Use that foundation brush they came out with to apply. It's meant to give you a soft, healthy flush. Oh, that's really pretty blended out. It's blending out super easily, giving my cheek a really nice glow. I love this shade. I think it's stunning. If you are a cream blush type of girl, I think you'll really like this. If by the end of the day, it's still going strong and have a nice tint on my cheek, then it's a yes for me. So we'll just have to wait and see. But so she came out with the Positive Light Liquid Luminizers. There is eight different Different shades but I got sent four of them I'm gonna just apply that with their face brush because I've been really liking that oh yeah that's beautiful I described this as like a second skin and I can totally see why like it definitely looks like it's like my natural sweat you know like I just sweat this beautifully. All of their face products have felt super silky. Some liquid formulas make your foundation like all patchy and can kind of not blend properly, but this literally glided on super nicely and melted right in, so I'm loving that. I feel like this look calls for some fake freckles, so I'm gonna use my favorite faux freckle product. It's from Freck. Now I'm finally ready to set my face. I definitely need to set it. I'm oily skin type. You can see, because I haven't set the concealer yet, it actually is cre creasing quite a bit, and I feel like we lost some of that coverage on my under eye but I think setting will solve those problems if you set right away. Using Charlotte Tilbury's setting powder because Rare Beauty hasn't launched one yet. So I've completely set my face. I also added some bronzer uh, to finish up the look. My under eyes are set. We still have a really nice glow on our cheeks, but most of that like excess glow is gone. Last up, we're testing out the lip products. So she came out with two different lip formulas. Let's first talk about the With Gratitude Dewy Lip Balm. She came out with eight shades and I got sent four of them. I'm gonna try the shade Praise. So this is just supposed to be like a tinted lip balm. Ooh, it does feel hydrating. This definitely wouldn't last you very long, like you'd have to reapply, but I love that it gives you just that like hint of color, very natural looking. They feel like as luxurious as like the YSL balmy lipsticks, you know? So I'm really digging the quality of these products so far. Last La up, we have the Lip Souffle Matte Lip Cream. This is like a whipped formula. I'm using the shade Inspire today. We're going, we're going bold. You know what? I am going to apply my own lip liner with this though. This is not going on streaky or patchy at all. It actually Actually is extremely lightweight and it's spreading around really easily. Actually feels really soft and really nice. I feel like it's diffusing like the lines in my lips. Like where do they go? It looks matte AF, but it almost feels like I have like a soft like powder on my lips. It doesn't feel drying or crusty. Whoa. Okay, this shade is stunning. The formula feels amazing. It feels really hydrating, but you're getting the look of like a matte liquid lipstick. It says it'll stay all day with no drying or caking. So we'll see about that. It's 426. I'm gonna eat some dinner, start editing this video, and I'll do a little wear test. We'll check in in a few hours to 
see how everything wears. I'm honestly really excited. Everything we're trying has been really good quality. I only didn't really like the sponge so far. The brow product was nice, but it's just not my type of brow product. So it doesn't mean it's bad. It just was not for me. So far, I'm not disappointed at all. Now it's really about how the products wear. So I'm gonna do my thing. See you in a bit. This is right after finished filming the makeup under sunlight. If you guys were curious what it looked like. Six o'clock and I just finished eating my dinner. I had some tacos, very messy, but my lip is not. So far so good, so see you in a bit. But I'm doing a quick check-in because I'm about to film an IGTV Q&A. Go check out my Instagram, follow your girl, watch the Q&A if you haven't already. So I'm gonna touch up my lip for that. I'm cheating a little bit, but honestly there's not much I really have to touch up. You can see the color is like not as vibrant. It definitely has faded, but see how it's faded so nicely? It's not patchy. My lips don't feel dry or anything. Like it's just a softer red now, you know? So I'm very impressed so far because I've been drinking White Claws, eating tacos, like smooching my dog, and the lipsticks lasted. So I'm actually really surprised by that. I have some smudging in my inner corner, but like I told you, that literally always happens. I just came upstairs because better lighting. Just touched up my lip, uh, but I, I'm gonna show you my forehead and my foundation in this lighting, because you can see my oils have kind of seeped through a little bit. This is honestly still pretty good for me for it being such a natural finish foundation. I have a bit of creasing here, but that always happens. It's almost 9.30, so it's been like five hours. That's honestly pretty good, because I haven't touched up my foundation once. Before I film this IGTV, I'm just gonna use one of the blotting papers from the collection and just help me out a little bit. Look at that. And because I set my face, not much of the foundation has lifted onto the paper this time. All right, see you in a few hours for one last check-in. Okay, final check-in and end of the video. It is 1.39 in the morning. Okay, I'm tired. It's been a long day, but my makeup though. My lip, I reapplied it just the one time. I'm still very impressed with it. It actually lasts so much longer than I thought and it fades beautifully. I ate greasy pizza and I didn't touch up afterwards and it still looks like this good. Confused, happy about it. As for the foundation, you can see I'm obviously pretty shiny right now. I did have to blot once and I just used the little kit. I'm actually a really big fan of this, especially being oily skin type. I can totally see my Myself making use of this kit, just throwing it in my purse. I didn't expect to love this little like powder puff so much. It works super well to get rid of the oils without ruining your makeup. The foundation, for the most part, has not gotten splotchy. It hasn't rubbed off in any of my like acne areas. I have a little bit of like buildup around my nostrils. So you see a tiny bit of creasing in my smile line. This is actually pretty good for me compared to a lot of other foundations. The liner looks as good as new. It's waterproof. It hasn't feathered or flaked or even smudged that much, except for a little bit in my inner corner but like I said, unavoidable for me. And the concealer still looks bomb. I definitely recommend setting it because we were noticing it creasing before setting it, obviously. So setting it makes a huge difference. And all in all, I'm honestly so impressed. This foundation reminds me of Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, and that is like more than double the price. Blush faded a little bit, but the color is still noticeable, so I'm still impressed by it. And also we have that glow from the highlight. It didn't go anywhere. The proof is in the pudding. Selena did that, okay? She did that and more. Excited to see what else the brand comes out with. I feel like they should do a liquid bronzer, a setting powder, some eyeshadows, give me a mascara, some falsies. Like, I'm ready for it. I was not disappointed with this launch. They started off strong and I'm excited to see what else is to come. Let me know what you guys think of this new launch. Will you be trying out Rare Beauty? Leave me some comments down below. I'm gonna go to bed. Please subscribe to my channel. This was a long video. Check out these other videos of mine if you haven't seen them yet and I will see you guys in my next one. Good night, bye-bye.